Hey everybody, this is Ori from AstroWeb, and today I'm going to introduce to you one of the most basic things you need to know about Magento, which is how to have Magento send emails out uh, on its behalf, and we call them transactional emails. So what is a transactional email? It's an email that gets sent based on some kind of action or transaction. So when a customer registers, when they forgot password, they need to receive an email, right? When they order, when they get an invoice email, when they get a shipment email, a refund, the system needs to send out emails on its behalf. So you need an actual system to send on its behalf because Magento is just a store, it doesn't know how to send emails. It needs to send emails out, right? So there's three mechanisms you can send out emails and we've made another video for this. The first one is the mail server. So if you have a shared hosting or your uh, IT actually sets up a mail server on the, that server, then Magento can send on its behalf and you don't need to do anything, but that's the least common way. The second way is you use an SMTP an account. You basically have an email address and, and a password. You give that to Magento and then Magento sends, basically connects to that email and sends it on its behalf. We made that video and I'll link it up in the description. And then this video is the third mechanism, which is the most uh, popular for larger businesses, which is you use a third party system to actually send on your behalf. Uh, so this video is going to use SendGrid, which is one of the third parties to send. The uh, reason why I like it is for small businesses, SendGrid is free. Uh, you have a certain threshold of emails you can send per month. And if you're a small business, it should cover you. If you're large, you can start paying. Uh, there's many other uh, a companies that do it. There's a, Obviously, MailChimp has Mandrill and Amazon SES. And there's all these companies that do it. The one I chose today is SendGrid because it's free. We use it for a lot of projects. Not all projects, but it's just one to recommend, and you guys can do your research, um, but definitely like it. Okay, so SendGrid itself, um, let me go here. Okay, so SendGrid, just so you have it, SendGrid.com. Uh, you can do all, all the research, everything. So I have an account right here, and I logged in. Um, so uh, what, what do you need to do in order to integrate this? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to get an extension in Magento to actually allow you to connect to the server, either to SMTP or in this case to your SendGrid account to authenticate on your behalf and then have Magento send, uh, ask SendGrid to send on, on its behalf. So this one is, uh, there's many extensions out there. This is one is Mage Plaza. It's a free one. We use it for many projects, but we've used Amnesty's and other, other companies as well. So again, do your research. I like to do this one. It's free. It works well. So no problem. Um, so you're going to ask your developer, you're going to go create an account, ask your developer to install it either by code or use composer. They're going to install it. And so once you install it, excuse me, then you're going to have the extension right here. So I can go here to stores and you're going to have this new section right here called configuration. Um, and so you're going to actually configure it. So first of all, you're going to uh, put your email in name and email and you're going to get a license key and you're just going to click and which I've done before. Um, and then now you're going to actually have to go and set it up. So what are the settings? Uh, number one, you're going to have to enable it first of all. Yes. Okay. And then if you scroll down, you're going to go to the configuration here. So the nice thing about this extension and many other extensions, they already have preloaded settings. So if I click here, you can look for yours. For example, I have SendGrid. I can click on load and it loaded the host name and the port and the protocol and then the authentic authentication method. Now, if you don't know, you can ask your provider or Google it and you can find all these things. They're usually pretty common, but every provider is slightly different. So you need to make sure. So now I need to actually set it up. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go here. I need to go to SendGrid. And after I set up an account, I created the two factor authentication, which is getting, you know, basically I set up my account correctly. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go to settings right here and I'm going to go to API keys. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on, I'm going to create a new API key. Okay. Obviously this is hidden. No one can see that. Um, so I'm going to click on a new API key and I'm going to call it a certain name. For example, I'm going to call it Magento um, API key, right? API. Okay. And I'm going to create on restricted access. You don't want to give API keys uh, additional access. So what is an API key? Just a quick, quick thing. Um, it's just a way for you to authenticate yourself to uh, for Magento to have access 
uh, securely to the other system. So when you connect the other system, you're going to say, hey, I have this key. I can enter this door, for example, right? I can use this system. That's what a, a key does in, in a very simple way. So I'm going to click on restricted um, and I'm going to go here to mail send and I'm going to allow mail sending right there. You see that? And that's it. I don't want to give it access to anything else because it's not Magento doesn't need to access anything else. So you shouldn't give a system more access than it needs. Okay, and I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on the view. Okay, now when I did it, my API key is right here. I'm going to copy that. Do not give anybody this. You're not going to be able to, once you click on done, you'll never see that again. You cannot retrieve that again. Don't show it to anybody. This video, obviously, I'm going to delete this key after, uh, before I publish it. So I'm going to secure it on my end. Don't share this. Only put it in Magento and don't save it anywhere else, right? If you, all, if you ever lose it, you can create a new API key. So now I'm going to go back to my configuration and I'm going to put in my, my uh, username. I'm going to put the word API key and I'm going to copy into the password the API key. It's a really long one, right? And I'm going to click on save. Okay. Now I need to do uh, two more things to, in order to finish. So number one is I'm going to actually have to go here and I'm going to have to configure my email address. So the obviously in the from of my address, I'm going to need to configure what I need to send from. So the same domain that I set up my account with, right? I set up an account here. I'm going to have to select the email I want to send. For example, sales at my domain or info at or customer service. So I'm going to set up all of these in the store email address. And as long as it's from the right domain, I'm authorized to do so. I can send on its behalf, right? So now I'm going to go back to my configuration. And if I set that up correctly, I'll be able to send emails on its behalf. So now if I go down, I can click here, um, assuming obviously I saved before, I, I can click here and I can send an email, um, test email f uh, to this email, right? From my sales at or shop at, and I'm gonna click here and test now. And I'm gonna get a notification ma mail, okay? So here, you see that I have uh, an issue, okay? So it says the from address does not match. So one of the things I need to do, there's two more things we need to do, is I need to authenticate. I need to allow SendGrid to send on behalf of my domain, okay? So I'm gonna click here on send uh, settings and uh, sender authentication. And I need to do actually three things. So mandatory, I only need to do this one. I need to basically tell SendGrid for spam purposes, I need to verify that I'm actually who I say I am. I am actually authorized on behalf, for example, of Legacy to send the email. So uh, number one, if I click here and verify a single sender, what it's going to do, it's going to actually uh, ask me for my information. <clears throat> And it's actually going to send an email to my email and I'm going to have to click on the link. If I click on that link, then I will be authorized as that email. So I can go, once I configure the info, I'm going to go back here to my settings, right? So general store email addresses and I'm going to click here and I'm going to send emails on behalf of info at, okay? Now if I run my test again, let's make sure it finishes saving. If I'm gonna run the test again, it should work, okay? So this, this you see right here, it's now I'm gonna get an email and now it worked. Now, um, this mechanism, if you only verify this one out of the three, you're only gonna be able to send emails on be from, from the address info at. Now, if you wanna send it be on behalf of other ones, you'd have to either verify other uh, senders or you'd have to authenticate your domain, which is the most recommended uh, thing to do. So both this and this. So what does that mean? Let me explain very simply. So when um, your Magento is asking SendGrid to send on its behalf, but SendGrid is not your legacy domain, right? It's not your legacybillions.com domain. So uh, you, if you set up certain DNS records on your DNS settings, you can authorize all sending to be happening from uh, from SendGrid. So let me show you an example. There's a visual right here. Okay, so you definitely want to do this, but I'm gonna skip it in the video. But so you would click here on authenticate, and then you would type in your your hosting provider. It can allow you. But what I can do, let me show you. Okay, and I want to do here. Would you like to brand the links for this domain? Okay, so if I click on next, when you click on next, for example, if I type in legacy, right? It'll show you that when emails get sent, if you follow these steps, the emails will actually get sent exactly from your domain. If you don't do that, 
then emails will be sent from SendGrid, right? So basically it'll be a less authoritative or less nice to show to your customers when they buy from your domain that they don't get an email from your domain. For example, you see it would say via, it would say your, your email address, but it would say via SendGrid. And no one, none of your customers know what SendGrid is. So you definitely want to follow these steps. And then when you do that, when you click on next, it's going to give you instructions for your IT to actually just put these settings, these CNAME settings in your DNS. And if you do that correctly and you've add that, you click on verify, it's going to allow you to verify, right? So it's going to verify that. And then once you do that, you're going to have these green verified right here and you can do it. And if you clicked on the yes, it'll verify both this and this at the same time. Why is that? Because you've selected yes, this yes, will actually verify also this. So it's like a one step thing. It'll give you all the settings. Um, that's it. So the last thing I want to show about this video is a little bit about logs. Um, so this extension and many other extensions, they have a logging, right? So it's a good idea to keep track of all the emails that get sent. So for example, if I go here and I want to forgot password, right? That's a transact, uh, either I register or create an order or something like that, right? So let's say if I click on forgot password as a customer, let me see these codes. Okay, let's see. Let's see it. Oh, didn't type it in. Sorry. Sometimes these codes are kind of crazy. So, okay. So if I type that in and, and the system sent an email, it's going to keep that in the system. So, oh, okay. So now if I go here to stores and I go to SMTP and email logs, I should have an email uh, right here. Okay, so reset password, perfect. So there was an error. So why was there an error? Let's see here. I can, first of all, I can view the email itself. Okay, I can resend it and I can delete it from the log. But let me, oh, cause send, sender is wrong. Okay, so give me a second. So what you need to do because you're sending different email addresses, I have here, uh, also customer configuration, I need to define my emails. Okay, so let's see here, this one. Let's open all of these. Let me find it, oh, here it is, okay. So let me go here to store configuration and store emails. I'm going to send all of these. So I'm going to create all of these from addresses. And the reason it wasn't sending is because uh, I didn't configure all of my from email addresses based on what I verified, right? So let's try it one more time. So this is, this is really good. Um, this issue, sh issue shows you how logs are important because you can debug things really easily. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Okay, so now if I sent it, oops, let's try it again. Let's find an easier one to do. Nope, too many requests. Okay, let's actually do one more. Let's create a new customer. Okay, so let's do this. I'm just going to register a new customer to show that example. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, so now if I go to logs, once it sends, I refresh that, I'm going to be able to see that it actually worked. Okay. So here, success. So I can view the email, I can resend it, and I can delete it. And so in the settings, um, you'll be able to see right here that you can actually have some basic things about the configuration. You can decide how long you want to keep logs for. So you can decide, and these are really good for debugging. So that's it. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions about how to set up the DNS, any things about SendGrid, uh, let me know, and we're, we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.